Hello everyone. My name is Lala Asif Alana and I work as a director of technology sales force at Royal Cyber. I welcome you all uh, in today's webinar on behalf of Royal Cyber. So in today's webinar, we are going to talk about Salesforce B2C headless commerce uh, as a product and uh, what Salesforce, uh, you know, uh, has given as part of this product. Um, so today's webinar will be consist of two, uh, you know, two pieces, I would say. One would be this presentation, which I will walk you through, um, uh, you know, in which we are going to touch uh, different areas of this uh, Salesforce headless, B2C headless commerce. Uh, the second session or the later part of this webinar, uh, I will have uh, one of my Salesforce B2C commerce developer, Abdul Basit, with me. Uh, he will be walking us through the storefront salesforce b2c commerce headless storefront from you know setting up the storefront and uh, setting up the headless commerce uh, you know uh, space uh, and uh, then from the storefront from login till checkout so as part of the today's webinar agenda uh, we are going to start with uh, the introduction of royal cyber in general and as a salesforce partner second we are going to talk about uh, you know the evolving of demand wear from you know from demand wear itself to the you know uh, different frameworks and then uh, you know sfra and then now headless commerce uh, we are also going to talk about what headless commerce is uh, in general and then uh, what headless commerce is when it comes to salesforce b2c commerce uh, what Salesforce provides uh, when it comes to the packaging of headless commerce architecture. Um, we are also going to see, you know, uh, uh, why one, one should go for headless commerce architecture. What are the pros and cons? Uh, we'll also see the, the uh, you know, evolving market trends, uh, you know, the companies who are trying to move towards headless commerce. Uh, we are also going to talk about uh, you know that which are the consumers and which are the companies who should actually go towards headless commerce you know um, and whether it is best best suited for all the all the all the companies or all the customers who are currently on sfra or or on site genesis so that is also something which we are going to talk about today we are also going to touch uh, a bit of the comparison between sfra and headless commerce and then uh, we'll we'll move towards the you know the demo piece of uh, Salesforce B2C Commerce headless uh, space and in the storefront. All right, so let's start with the Royal Cyber introduction. So Royal Cyber in uh, you know in the e-commerce industry for almost last uh, twenty years, and uh, you know uh, we have now at present around fifteen hundred plus resources uh, you know across the globe uh, we have 11 offices in nine different countries um, we are you know uh, technology partners with all the all the big brands uh, uh, which includes IBM which includes SAP which includes Salesforce Shopify uh, Adobe commerce so uh, uh, we provide end-to-end -end services uh, in you know in in, uh, in different models, which includes an, a completely onshore model, or a complete offshore model, uh, and a hybrid model, uh, which includes both onshore and offshore. Our major development development offices are based out of India and Pakistan. Uh, we have office our head office uh, is in Chicago, and uh, we have offices in Canada and in, in AMZ region in KSA region. This is uh, this is you know a list of our current or existing client, uh, which includes uh, Brambleberry, which includes True Religion, Y Design Group, Titan Brands, Indigo Canada. Capital Lighting, uh, Evercombi and such. Uh, so, uh, Royal Cyber is a kind of a one-stop shop. I mean, when any customer connects with Royal Cyber, let's say for 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 or with for for engagement of an e-commerce platform implementation, uh, then that customer don't have to go any anywhere else in terms of let's say if that project requires a DevOps uh, resources or that project requires middleware resources 
or let's say if that project requires integration uh, developers, uh, you we have different practices uh, with different uh, specialized skill set, so which can you know which can fulfill all your business need under the umbrella of World Cyber. And uh, before I move towards this slide, I mean the the unique thing about our existing clientele is some of and in fact most of the customers which which you see on this list are have you know have been with us for for the longest of time you know uh, let's say Humana, Miss Marine or Aramark, uh, Office Brands all, all these customers have been with us for for more than five years you know all right so now when it comes to the the current partnership status of Royal Cyber with Salesforce so we are silver level consulting partners and uh, we are also link certified partners means we also develop apart from giving consulting services to uh, to uh, you know different companies uh, we also provide uh, create link certified cartridges or link solutions on top of salesforce b2c commerce Okay, apart from Salesforce Commerce Cloud, so we have two major areas of focus as part of the practice uh, when it comes to Royal Cyber. Uh, so we focus is on uh, Salesforce B2C Commerce Cloud. That's the one major area of focus. And second is the Salesforce CRM, which covers all these clouds, which you see on this slide, you know, sales, service, marketing, community, uh, health cloud, analytics, uh, so these are the two major areas of focus uh, when it comes to you know the salesforce practice at royal cyber okay now let's talk about uh, a bit of the you know the evolution of uh, you know demand where uh, from site genesis to this salesforce headless commerce so demand where you know uh, released its first site genesis pipelines pipeline based architecture pipeline based framework version back in 2009 then in 2014 2014 they released another version uh, of the same site genesis architecture but on the controller you know uh, framework or on the mbc framework uh, back in 2014 then in somewhere around uh, you know a mid half or i would say a mid of 2016 salesforce acquired demandware and uh, uh, you know and then in 2017 salesforce released this M mfra based architecture which was actually available for both web and mobile so so the main uh, thing which happened in this mfra version was that it, it, it became available for both mobile and uh, web plus uh, the backend code which was coming for you know the customers who were already on site genesis controller version so most of the backend code code was intacted uh, you know when they moved towards this mfra or they migrated towards this mfra version then uh, in 2018 um, you know salesforce released this SFRA, you know, Salesforce reference architecture framework. And uh, I mean, in this, the, the major focus was on both the sides and the back end and the front end. They uh, almost entirely redesigned the back end framework. Uh, and again, I mean, there were some, some, you know, prominent changes which were made at the front end side. They introduced Bootstrap as the, uh, you know, they used Bootstrap uh, to to have this SFRA or to make this SFRA architecture completely responsive and the mobile first approach was adopted in this uh, Salesforce SFRA, uh, you know, framework. And then, uh, you know, evolving from this 2009 side genesis to this 2021, they released this PWA kit, you know, um, uh, with the mobify storefront they initially started with the mobify storefront back in 2021 and at that time this whole platform of this product was not to that level where uh, it was being right away adopted by the companies uh, uh, you know uh, but now uh, you know this if i if i talk about this uh, the end of 2022 and the start of 2023 
uh, after using these B2C commerce APIs or after making use of B2C commerce APIs, it's, it has completely, uh, you know, uh, reached to a different level where uh, they have this complete architecture, storefront architecture out of the box available as part of this PWA kit. And we'll talk about this, uh, this PWA kit and the rest of the components which are part of the solution in our latest slides. All right. So now uh, let's talk about what is headless commerce. So headless commerce is, is a decoupling or a, or a separation of a front end application from the back end. Uh, it allows, uh, you know, uh, the front end or developers or it allows the technology heads to, to use any front end application or any front end, uh, you know, tool to connect with the back end. Uh, it's it's a very simple definition of how headless commerce works. Uh, so you here here you see in this uh, you know in this diagram or in this picture, there's a backend system, and then there's an API which connects the backend with the frontend. And the the major advantage here is that your frontend uh, is completely separated from your backend through this bridge of API. Uh, and then your front end can deliver content on multiple devices on multiple channels uh, very seamlessly. Now this is another example here you see in, in today's like for example if I if I just take an example if you see all these you know uh, e-commerce platforms where Salesforce is there SAP commerce is there big commerce or commerce tools, any backend can have this any e-commerce platform. And uh, on the front end, you can have either a React base or an Angular based, or you know you can use uh, PHP or, or Drupal or any front end uh, language or tool which you can use to connect with this backend engine, with, this, with these backend platforms, uh, you know, through the bridge of this APIs or I would say B2C commerce APIs, specifically in the case of Salesforce B2C commerce. And uh, in, in today's time, I mean, there are a lot of a lot of vendors who are actually giving the complete CMS systems, you know, which, uh, which you can use to have or to build your front end, uh, you know, uh, along with the CMS system. I mean, it's not only the front end tool or the programming or the developer tool, which you, which you, which you can have, as part of the front end, but also you can also have the CMS to, to manage your content, uh, uh, you know, at the front end level uh, and to connect with the back end headless commerce APIs. So the, you, you see here this e spread or this content stat, and, and plus, uh, you know, a lot of other companies are there who are providing their complete headless commerce, uh, you know, CMS systems to support or to connect with the back end headless commerce. You know with with all these platforms they have the readily made available plugins or the connectors available to to integrate with all these e-commerce platforms all right so it's now this particular uh, diagram shows a very simple salesforce b2c headless commerce architecture um, so you see here the top uh, shoppers for, for, for a buyer or for a, for a customer who comes at the storefront. Uh, there's, a, there's a responsive PW, there's a completely responsive experience which is made available by the PWA kit, which is one of the offerings of this Salesforce B2C headless commerce product. Uh, this PWA kit comes with the storefront templates out of the store, out of the box storefront templates. Uh, from the login till checkout till the order submission. So this particular layer uh, shows, you know, that experience which buyer gets uh, using the out of the box PWA kit provided by Salesforce B2C Commerce. And then there's a layer where, you know, uh, Salesforce, uh, uh, you know, provides the managed runtime. Uh, again, it, 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 it comes as part, it, it is being packaged as part of the product B2C Headless Commerce product. Uh, which takes care of your, you know, infrastructure, security, you know, auto scaling, caching, monitoring. And at the, at the bottom layer, you see the B2C commerce APIs. Now that's the bridge. That's the key here, uh, you know, which your front end uses this B2C commerce APIs to access 
or to reach or to get the data or to extract the data or to pull the data out from Salesforce Commerce Cloud. And when I say data, it, it, you know, uh, you know, it, and this data covers different components of Salesforce Commerce Cloud. Let's say products, pricing, promotions. All this data can be pulled using this B2C Commerce APIs and being consumed by the front end or the, you know, in the Salesforce specific, specifically in the Salesforce B2C commerce case, the, the react based storefront, which is part of this, you know, this, this package. Okay. So now here, let's talk about the packaging. Now, PWA or PWA, PWA kit uh, is basically one of the packet, one of the components, which are, which is part of this, uh, the Salesforce B2C headless commerce offering. Now, what exactly the PWA is? Uh, so a progressive web app is a website that looks and behaves as if it is a mobile app. So, you know, you, you guys may have experience of installing, everybody almost ha has experience of installing a mobile app, a native mobile app on the mobile device. Now this works, this app actually is, is, is not a native app, but it works similar to the kind of a native app. Uh, once you install, this pwa you know you have this uh this icon created on your web means on your desktop as well as on your mobile if you do it on mobile and uh you know it works through the browser that's why we are calling it as a website but it, but it gives you a feel of that you are using a native app it is fast you know when it comes to loading uh it also has an offline support and it's installable on a home screen. So as soon as you install it, you will see the icon created. And th this is something which Vasit would be showing you, you know, once he will be doing the setup as part of this webinar in the later session. Uh, it also supports push notifications, which, which, are, which are, you know, part of normal native apps. Uh, now PWA kit, which is actually a part of Salesforce B2C headless commerce what actually it contains. So it contains the framework for creating a storefront with React. So it's a React, so it comes with React out of the box React based storefronts, which are part of this PWA kit. So let's say, for example, if your company plans to, to you know, uh, uh, to go with the PWA kit or the packaging or, or the offerings uh, which are provided by Salesforce B2C headless commerce out of the box and your company don't want to go with any other third party, uh, you know, front end tool or front end application or any third party CMS, you still want to keep uh, yourself even at the front end side using Salesforce B2C headless commerce offerings, then this PWA kit comes with the react based storefront out of the box. Uh, which gives a customer or which gives developer a uh, templates from login till checkout. So it is similar to like when you, when you have this SFRA, you know, when you use SFRA framework, you, you see the out of the box storefront available. Similarly, when you, when you are on headless commerce and you use the PWA kit, you will have a react based storefront out of the box available for the customers to use. Okay, so now this, this is the second offering. Uh, one was the PWA kit. Second is the ma managed runtime. So Salesforce also gives you a facility of hosting this, this headless commerce application within the Salesforce, uh, you know, uh, in one of the containers or the components, which is called as managed runtime. So managed runtime provides the infrastructure to deploy, host, and monitor your PWA kit storefront on a public cloud. Uh, again, I mean, it's a Salesforce, uh, you know, uh, fulfill, uh, fulfills its its commitment or the promise of uh, being a SaaS based, uh, you know, solution provider. So they provide this managed runtime. It was not there. It was not there when when uh, this headless commerce uh, it was released back in 2021. So this is something new, which has Salesforce has given as part of this PWA kit. This managed runtime comes with now. Uh, as the packaging of the Salesforce B2C headless commerce product. It provides you the app server, CDN, proxy server, firewall, also provide the admin tools for operation like deploying. And again, all this infrastructure when it comes to app server, CDN server, you know it's similar to what you have in on SFRA. Uh, it is being completely managed and monitored by Salesforce. 
okay why pwa why salesforce chose chosen pwa to be to be as one of the you know uh, offerings of this salesforce b2c headless commerce why did not they go for any other technology or tool so pwa is is, is a you know as i said that is it's completely responsive uh, it is uh, you know it is uh, it can be installed on desktop mobile template and uh, it it gives you uh, the faster loading time uh, it works uh, offline as well uh, uh, you know it is its installation is not like a native app installation although it does requires installation uh, but not like a native app uh, uh, it also works with weaker networks and low bandwidths plus as it is it also supports push notifications uh, you know once you have this uh, this uh, this pwa app installed again at the front end side it is available on multiple devices and channels uh, plus uh, when it comes to native app obviously i mean let's say if you are on android or on uh, you know uh, ios you have to have those apps installed by going to an app store or a google store to 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 have those apps installed here it's it's not it's not like that i mean it's just one app uh, which you have which you install and it is it is runnable or available right away on your phone or on your web okay so what salesforce headless commerce pwa kit offers now we talked about pwa what is pwa we talked about pwa kit which comes with salesforce and now we are going to talk about the pwa kit which comes with salesforce what actually it has so uh, it has those project templates including a customizable storefront that implements core e-commerce flows from home page to checkout so this is something which i talked uh, you know in in the previous slide that like when you have when you are uh, using the SFRA or when you have the SFRA, you, there's out of the box storefront which comes with SFRA, which gives you uh, the out of the box flow for a customer from the login till checkout. Similarly, this PWA kit comes with this with the templates or a customizable React based storefront, which gives a customer a look and feel. Uh, or an experience from login till checkout and then again i mean it's your your team who can who can make changes at the, the front end level at the react uh, you know uh, uh, on the react based storefront to make changes at the front end side and then again i mean uh, the back end engine is being supported through the bridge of this uh, you know commerce api b2c commerce apis a rendering system that works on both the server side and the client side a routing system that allows you to inject data from commerce api into your components uh, so again i mean there's a there's it's the same you know uh, architecture where the, the the front end application pulls out or extracts data through these B, b2c commerce apis from the back end e-commerce platform which is salesforce b2c commerce Utility functions and scripts for automating routing development tasks, integration with B2C Commerce API and Okapi as well. Okay, now there's this something which which is being very uh, which is being talked about very you know very most often that people start comparing PWA with with uh, with native. Now, what is the difference? I mean. Uh, first as i said that you know pw is cross platform you don't need to have a separate installation for a for a uh, you know on an ios or for android you don't have two separate apps i mean uh, it's it's just one app it's cross platform which you install and you will have that icon available to you know to uh, to to have that application running on your web or on your mobile low development cost for sure yes i mean uh, it's, it's pretty obvious when you are developing an app a native app you have to develop for ios and for uh, for android so it means you requires double effort double development effort more time more cost here uh, less development time obviously you know uh, is this directly proportional to the less cost both are installables uh, PWA does support offline usability, which you don't see, uh, you know, in the native apps. Uh, 
especially uh, you know when i say you don't see it in native apps i'm talking about here uh, you know the e-commerce apps or the e-commerce applications pwa is a web version it's linkable uh, you know you can share the url or the links with uh, you know with with any any other uh, you know uh, any other person uh, and again i mean fast ui yeah i mean but again when it comes to pw it is much more faster uh, uh, when it compares to to a normal web application okay how this pw affects uh, in this whole uh, salesforce b2c commerce headless architecture so you see here this uh, you know uh pw kits kit sits on top of this architecture on top of this container uh this pw kit as we discussed you know it comes with the react based storefront which gives you uh the the complete uh, out of the box storefront from login till checkout flow uh you know and then again that is customizable based on the the front end needs which you have to to customize that react based storefront then managed runtime as we discussed is it's a container uh, for for uh, or the runtime provided by salesforce to host your application for the deployments um, and again i mean it's not only for your dev sandboxes even if you as as i said that if you if you decide to go by using pwa kit and managed runtime as part of your btc headless commerce implementation this is available for your production instances as well uh you don't need to go for any third party vendor or any third party cms application uh, or 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 tool to to create your uh, and or host your front end application and then again uh the data or the components are here which includes cart payment pricing promotions uh, inventory products you know all these being pulled out or extracted using this b2c commerce apis uh you know through this react based storefront which is part of this pwa kit okay now let's talk about why you know headless why somebody should go for headless so the the first and the foremost is time saving across it because developers uh, are mostly you know uh, uh, engaged in purely the development activities your your merchandisers your marketing people your business teams can start making changes at the front end applications uh, you know and and they they can be deployed those front end changes can be deployed very quickly so there is a very less dependency of uh, you know on on the it folks on the technical folks uh, when it comes to headless faster time to market yes for merchants can merchant can launch can launch new front end experience quickly uh, accelerating the actions to market with minimal cost costly back end development so that's what i just said that you know uh, your front end changes let's say for example if you want to make changes on the product detail page or on plp page your front end team your marketing team your business team can make those changes quickly and they can be seamlessly deployed uh you know on to your live storefront instance and can be readily available for your customers i mean this is very quick when it compares to uh, a traditional uh, monolithic based uh, you know architecture of the e-commerce or even the uh, you know if i compare it with sfra based architecture where even in sfra if you are making changes to the front end side you most of the time you are ending up changing at the back end as well but here uh, that's not the case i mean if you are making changes at the front end uh, those front end can changes can be very seamlessly deployed on your uh, you know uh, on your storefront and would be available and make and, and are available for your customers uh, who are visiting your si live site uh in widen technology scope obviously i mean if your front end is different your front end is separated from your back end uh, you have more uh, you know control on your front end you can have more uh, you know this this your uh, you know you can have your front end available for more devices i would say it's completely responsive and but again you can have that front end available for more channels which includes your uh, your tablets your 
you know uh, mobile web and even the smart watches as well more improved website performance and seo improvements uh, increase front end portability to other devices such as watches kiosk screen iot better employee adoption Every, everyone on the team can easily access and update the front end without advanced developer skills so that's what i just talked about i mean when it comes to the front end yes it becomes it becomes a lot easier with less dependency on your technical folks to have your front end changes deployed on your storefront as quick as possible and here you see there are different personas which are being discussed here so merchandisers continue to use the ui and workflow automation within the salesforce commerce cloud to make changes that are exposed on the storefront via the commerce apis so again i mean merchandisers has nothing to do with the commerce apis they are just dealing with the front end tools same as goes for marketers or project managers ux designers they can simply make their changes and get them deployed on the storefront as soon as possible and have them available for your shoppers at the back end what is happening how the data is being pulled using these commerce apis these personas or these roles has nothing to do with that so that's that's how your front end uh, or your front end changes becomes readily available uh, on your website if with headless merchants controls the element shoppers interact with more easily and marketing teams can get more creative with the content they publish also the universal compa compatibility of headless commerce ensures that the website works seamlessly and as intended across all devices and viewing formats so that's 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 the real advantage i mean your changes goes directly on your website on all the channels where your or the devices where the website is is being available headless and stairs ads so yeah i mean market is trending towards this this new trend of e-commerce uh, According to Forbes, over 1.65 billion in financing has been obtained for headless technology in 2020 and 2021. 80% of businesses that don't have headless architecture today say they plan to implement in the next two years. So, so I'm I'm telling you from from the experience which we are getting or which we are uh, you know uh, hearing uh, you know in in past few months. Uh, each of our existing customers or even the prospects customers when we talk with them they they have started comparing whether who are on site genesis uh, either on the pipeline or the or on the you know uh, controllers version uh, keeping this in mind guys that even till today i mean half of the customers of salesforce b2c commerce are still using the site genesis and uh, pipeline or controller version now they are planning to move towards the sfra but now this question is coming into their mind that whether they should go for SFRA or they, whether they should go towards the headless commerce architecture. 77% of organizations with headless architecture says it enables faster changes to storefront. And yes, it, it, it does. It, it actually does when it comes to the front end uh, of your e-commerce application. And again, I mean, those changes reflect very quickly on your website. Uh, headless commerce is gaining momentum 34 percent of organizations say it takes weeks or months to make changes to their digital storefront yes if you are not on headless then obviously if you, you're a small project a project which you may uh, you know uh, look for a change of your front end uh, for uh, for two weeks time you may have to take additional two weeks to apply the back end changes corresponding to those front end changes and the small project will also start uh, or start uh, starts getting bigger you know when it when you are on on uh, uh, a non headless commerce architecture 76 percent of uh, you know people agree that the headless commerce allows for more flexibility and the ability to customize digital experience yes that is true 72 percent voted that it has also increased agility and gives opportunity to make changes faster 50% of leaders from all business sizes says that they plan to implement headless in the next two years. And that's what I just said that, you know, when we are currently meeting or speaking with our existing customers, this is, this is something which, which uh, has become a debatable topic that 
uh, you know, whether they should keep SFRA in the existing roadmap or they should go for headless commerce architecture. So this is, uh, you know, this is the slide which actually answers whether they should go for SFRA or they should, you know, uh, try to move towards the headless. So headless, honestly, headless commerce is not uh, uh, a piece of cake for, for everybody, for every customer who is on Salesforce B2C commerce. While headless might not be the right fit for every business, for some, it's a solution that can solve previously unsolvable unsol challenges. Now, what the, the major thing which which you which as a as a retailer as a as a company you should have if you if you plan to move towards headless, you have a strong in-house or SI team to manage and maintain front end and back end side of your e-commerce. With most of the time, two different skill set. Yeah, it does require two. Most of the time, it does require two different skill set. Means. Let's say if you're using a third party application to maintain and manage your front end, you need to have your UI strong UI UX team uh, with your front end, uh, you know, uh, skills with the front end skills, which are part of your platform. And then again, you also need to need to have the back end team as well with the required and specialized skills of that back end e-commerce platform. And obviously this, this, you know, this increases your budget, this include increases the cost, this increases the resources, this increases the, the cost in terms of the licensing of, you know, of your front end product and your back end as well. If a company is trying to look uh, to create a seamless digital experience across multiple customer touch points and devices, then yes, headless commerce is the right way forward. Uh, if you have a multi-site or internationalization or international selling needs serving of multiple front-end experience, if you're looking, for example, if you have, you know, uh, 50 different brands being, uh, being, ser uh, being serving or, or serving to different uh, geographical regions and you have different, uh, you know, uh, layouts, themes uh, of your websites, then yes, I mean, you, you are richer when it comes to front-end then yes, I mean, headless is, is the key there because you can have your, your front end changes going out very quickly and uh, can serve your customer. So that's, yeah, that's one of the major points here. It, all, it already uses a CMS. So for example, if you already are using a CMS tool or a CMS application uh, and you just want to have uh, 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 a new backend then yes then another uh, you can use salesforce b2c commerce backend with your cms and then yes headless commerce is one of the keys for that i mean one of one of the way, way forward okay now we are just uh, you know going to very quickly touch on this sfra versus headless uh, see sfra has been in the market for for very long now uh, you know uh, I think back in 2019, which we which we just saw in the initial slides, uh, which when it was first launched, SFR is a complete matured product. Most of the most of the app exchange cartridges which you see on Salesforce Marketplace are available for SFRA. Uh, there are you know there are some some features which are there in SFRA, but they are not till now update, uh, being available as part of the PWA kit. And those those features are A/B testing, personalization, page designer, sitemap. All these are already there as part of the SFRA, uh, but they are not uh, being incorporated uh, in the PWA kit or in the React based tool until now. But yes, I mean it's it's it doesn't mean that you cannot do it. You can do it with with some customized development and uh, you know some more effort. And this is again a, a similar kind of comparison of SFRA and the PWA kit. Uh, all right, so I think uh, we are good now and I will now uh, give this control to uh, Abdul Basit. He is actually going to walk us through this uh, Salesforce B2C Commerce headless storefront demo. And uh, before I do that, so this, uh, you know, uh, here as part of this webinar, we're just trying to give you uh, an overview or, or, or a brief of how this uh, B2C commerce headless uh, storefront you can set up within your space uh, from start to end 
and uh, and also the PWA kit as well. Uh, all right, so I think uh, yeah, over to you, Abdul. Thank you very much, Asif. And as you all have done with the presentation of PWA Headless Commerce Cloud application, now let's try to do the setup and configuration of this headless application provided by Salesforce. To uh, to get started, let's try to open a command prompt or any of your terminal and run this command provided by Salesforce. So once you run this command, it will ask you a question either do you want to continue with the salesforce provided demo instance or do you have your own instance or you want to continue with it so you have two choices one uh, the first one do not require any configuration it just directly install the demo application the second one will provide you customization and connect with your own instances so let's let's select the second one the first one is what is the name of your project so let's give the name after that it will ask me what is the url of the commerce cloud instance so i already have my url commerce cloud instance so let's just copy it and paste it into here after that it asks me what is your slas client id to get the slas client id first you need to require your short code so to get the short code you can go to your business manager and inside of the business manager go to the administration and inside of the business manager administration site development under site development you have option salesforce commerce api settings and when you open this it will have two of two uh, two codes one is a short code other one is a organization code you can copy both of them because after the after this command you will also require your organization id but let's uh, just copy the short code and uh, you can uh, use this url uh, but, but you have to replace uh, replace this part with your own short code and let's open it into a new browser new tab so once you open it into a new tab it will look like this and you have your uh, your client id if you already have any of it but if you are logging in into a first time so you do not have any of your id so you can simply click on it and add a new id so let's copy this id and go to our command prompt again and paste this id after this id it will ask me which site i want to connect so i have uh, some site in my bm so for example site genesis refarc global and refarc i want to connect the refarc to my headless application so i give the name of refarc and after that it asks me the organization id so to get the organization id you can follow the same step go to your business manager and inside of the business manager go to the administration and after it go to the site development and inside of the salesforce commerce api setting where you have your organization id so you can simply copy it into your clipboard and go to your uh, command prompt again and paste this id and then it asks me uh, ask your short code so to get the short code same procedure go to the administration and then site development and inside of it you have the salesforce commerce api setting where you got your short code copy it and again go to your uh, command prompt and paste here so these are the necessary detail or the configuration that it require to do the setup of the headless application now let's press enter so after it requires some time and after the after this uh, after requiring this time it will create a new headless commerce cloud application into your system once the application is created open it into any of your ide for example in vs code uh, and here you have the structure of your application the most important uh, folder here is configuration folder let's open it but once uh, you have installed your application so you do not have the production.js file you have to create this file to your own uh, the, you only have the mock folder default js and site js let's open the default js inside of the default js you have all of your configuration you can even manually change these of the configuration if some are changes okay so uh, to uh, to replicate this uh, this default js file and rename it into a production.js file and you can change the setting as per your production uh, site 
so if your application is ready and now you are going to host it into a manage runtime and manage runtime is a platform where your react pwa kit uh, applications production build will be hosted to host it into a manage runtime you can open a uh, open uh, go to the terminal and uh, open new terminal and run a command uh, this is the command npm run push with any of the relevant message that you want to commit So once you have done with that thing you can go to your manage runtime and here is your manage runtime Let's log in here Once you log in into your runtime commerce cloud.com where you have your project So let's select the project RC headless commerce and here it is showing me my environment which are currently available So I only have the production environment so let's click on it and here it is showing me my bundles which are deployed uh, like I have deployed eight bundle so if I want to go to any of the previous bundle so I can redeploy that old verge uh, old bundle also and here it is showing me my deployment history that way that what thing I have deployed in that manage runtime now let's uh, click on the view site and see how our site is look like As this application is PWA supported, so at the top of the URL, uh, it is showing you this icon. Let's click on it and uh, it is uh, asking you, do you want to install this application? So if you install this application, so this application is uh, running outside of your browser and act like a desktop application. Or if you, uh, if you open this URL and install it into your mobile phone, so it will look like a mobile uh, native application where you can uh, you do not uh, use the browser every time you can run it outside your browser so this is uh, the main landing page which is seen as the landing page of ref arc application so at the top of it you have all of your categories you have your cart icon your wish list your user uh, user logged user detail and all these things so let's explore these category so here we have different category which we also have in our uh, ref arc so let's select this new arrival inside of it we have this one click on it so a new page is loaded which is basically the plp page same as the plp page of ref arc website in the left side we have all of our refinements we can even uh, collapse it any of the refinement if you want or in the right uh, in the right side we have the product detail with the tiles so let's select any of the tile for example this one so a new page is loaded which is basically the pdp page same as the pdp page of ref arc website here you have your picture uh, your 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 product picture you have multiple pictures you you can uh, you can see different pictures and at the bottom if you scroll it so you have the details, you have the sizes, reviews, or, or the or FAQs. And uh, if you scroll up, so you have in the right side, you have your details, your price, your color with variants. So let's select the new variant. And you can also change, uh, the, change the variant also. So let's increase the quantity, maybe three. And now this time try to add this into our card, but we can also add into our wish list also. So let's add it into a card and see. So a confirmation message is occur uh, loaded that the, this item is added into the card, which is showing that three item added we, because we have selected the three quantity. And now let's try to go to the proceed to checkout option. And uh, when, when we loaded the proceed to checkout option, so what it does, it can ask our contact information. Uh, so for example, if you do not have an account, so you can use any of your email and continue as a guest checkout. So for example, select this email and then go to the, uh, go to the shipping address where, we, where it is requiring you the, uh, the detail of your shipping address along with your name and, uh, and phone number. And select the country and uh, after that a relevant uh, fields and 
any of the random uh, postal code and after that you click on continue to shipping method when you click on continue to shipping method so it will load this uh, this option so uh, it has multiple option uh, uh, so if you select this express so it will uh, also added the price in uh, in your total so let's select this one and continue to payment so the price uh, price is changed because of the express payment method uh, express shipping method so here we have the payment method a payment for the payment method we have the adn payment method it is loading uh, i believe the okay it is loaded so let's try to copy the test card detail i already have the one so let me paste the card and fill the other detail and if everything is okay so you can go to the next step which is basically the review order so before placing order you can review your order if everything is okay so you can place the order otherwise you can edit any of thing which you want so for uh, so i am okay with all these details so let's place this order once you place this order you will receive a new page with a confirmation of your order detail or also you have received an email uh, which you have provided for this order detail let's quickly copy this order number and go to our business manager and inside of the business manager select the site we have selected the site ref arc and go to the merchant tool inside of it ordering and orders and let's paste the order number and find it so here is the detail of this order that this is done by the ref arc site order detail email customer number total amount and let's try to open this order for more detail so here are other detail of this order the payment detail the cost uh, cost divide that the tax total shipping total all these things are present here so at the top of the uh, top of the hit top of the tab we have the payment so let's click on it so here it is providing us the detail about the payment method uh, or the payment provider which we have integrated in our headless application which is basically the adn payment method so here is the detail of this adn payment method so now let's quickly go to the dashboard of adn and see how our payment is look like so once you log in into your ADN payment method, go to your transaction and go to the payments. Once you go to the payment, so you will see that uh, the merchant reference, your order number 1902, which you have placed using the headless application, same as. So this was the, uh, let's verify this number. It is same as the order number we have placed. So here is the detail of this app, uh, this order. So let's open it and find the further detail which is present inside of the uh, ADN payment uh, dashboard. And this app, uh, this payment is authorized. Okay. So as we have done with the demo of headless application, now let's try to explore the last feature of this PWA headless application, which is a push notification. So to explore this uh, option, first you have to uh, op enable the notification like I have enabled it. If it is not enabled in your browser, so you can uh, manually enable it and then you can go to your systems and also enable this notification this google chrome or your supported browser notification enabled then we have implemented a job so let me go to the jobs here and then i will run this job once i will run this job so you see that i have received a notification although due to my screen sharing so this is the content for this notification is not visible but i have received a notification for this pwa headless application so that's all for this demo now i am handing over the controls to asif once again thank you very much thank you thank you abdul uh, this was really good uh, a really good demo uh, and uh, you walked us through you know from the start till end from the pwa kit till to management time and to the storefront thank you very much abdul all right so uh, so guys we uh, 
we are, as I said, that we are silver level consulting partners as well as we are link partners. We have uh, right now uh, 4.8 out of 5 uh, rating as a partner on Salesforce App Exchange, and this is completely based on the work which we have done for our existing and past customers uh, within the Salesforce uh, B2C commerce and Salesforce CRM domain. So, uh, you know, all the attendees of today's webinar, uh, you know, we we are going to reach out to you, to all of you uh, through email and uh, you will hear from our inside sales team. And we are going to offer you a complimentary free two weeks discovery package, uh, which you can avail to, uh, to conduct or to ask us to conduct uh, assessment, free assessment of your existing Salesforce B2C commerce space. Uh, and that assessment will cover the the analysis uh, and the identification of migrating your environment to either on SFRA or on B2C headless commerce and how much uh, this is going to, uh, uh, how, how much time it is going to take. So all this, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, what we do is we, we, uh, we, understand your existing space we check the customizations we check the integration points and uh, you know uh, we do a thorough analysis of your existing salesforce commerce cloud space b2c commerce space and then we come up with the recommendations and the proposal uh, of uh, migrating it to sfra or on or headless other than that if you have any uh, you know any pain points any existing challenges let's say if you are not right now planning to migrate to say SFRA or on headless still you can make use of this free two weeks assessment and you, you can and we can work with your team to address any of the pain points or the challenges which you are facing in your existing Salesforce Commerce Cloud space. All right so now we are going to uh, you know take a few questions. Uh, all right so uh, we'll see what questions we have on the chat. 